Today I'm at Jurs Summerland in the east of Denmark for the first time, home to three interesting Intamin roller coasters, some fantastic thrill rides and amazing theming throughout this gorgeous theme park. Just look at that water coaster. So come and join me for a day at Jurs Summerland and I'll take you on the rides with me. Well, greetings from Jurs Summerland. It's another day, another park. I'm over to the east of Denmark this time and really looking forward to another Summerland park. Um, Fire up yesterday was really good fun. This, uh, I feel, has probably got a slightly more complete lineup of rides. We've got three really interesting intermins here, so let's go and explore. <laughs> so first on the agenda this morning is Piraten, an intermin megalite I don't think I've ridden a Megalite before, but you know how much I love Intamin roller coasters. So really excited to get on this one. I'm expecting a bit of airtime, and uh, these are old style Intamin trains. So I think kind of Millennium Forty vibes. Let's do it. That's some quite cool little pirate theming around here as well. Well, some good first impressions there of Paratan on the front row. Decent airtime. Uh, obviously, the front, you didn't get the full force of the drop, but I'm hoping a back row next will uh, solve that issue. But yeah, I was pretty impressed with that. It does ride, ride like the older Intamins. It doesn't quite have that modern flair that a lot of the new ones do, but even still, some really good ejector airtime in places. It was still running very smooth for its age. Yeah, really solid. I'm going to go back and do the back row. Well, background Paraton also really good. I think the front was certainly better. I think you got more air time at the front, which is surprising. Although there were a succession of Stengel dives about midway through the course, where at the back you really did get dragged over those hills. But that's a really solid coaster. Obviously, it has aged a little bit when you consider how much Intamin have developed in the last few years with their multi-launch coasters and stuff like that. Their modern trains are so incredible that even pretty good trains like that feel a little substandard in comparison. But for its age, that rides really well. Really enjoyed that. We'll come back for it later. But let's explore a little. There's some fantastic pirate theming just ahead of me. So I'm gonna turn the camera around, and give you a look. So we've got this really cool little, little pirate beach here with a lake and a uh, little shipwreck in the middle. There was some water effects as well that kick off sporadically as well. So yeah, it certainly feels like more of a theme park than Farrup did yesterday, whereas that felt much more uh, in touch with the nature side. But yeah, all good so far. Let's carry on exploring. Yeah, look at all this around here. This is really nice, isn't it? Well, that is how you do a station for a water coaster, isn't it? How impressive is that? Oh, this whole area around here is so nice. They've really put a lot of thought and effort into it. So let's go on and ride.
or Scation, as I believe it's pronounced, was a really fun Mac Rides water coaster there. Kind of does everything you expect from a water coaster. It takes you up, you do a few elements, and then drop back down into the water. But the presentation is really what makes this. The theming, the setting it's in, is all just really nice. And so, yeah, top marks for that. So they have this random viewing turret that just has music playing. Like the music is literally for me and nobody else. Cool. See, gone. I do love random things like that at theme parks though. How cute is that little pirate log flume? <laughs> Look at the little boats. And here's the entrance for that little log flume. The uh, theming here is so cool and quirky here. So much effort gone into it. Like this all looks really nice. I'm not gonna ride it because it's uh, not really my thing, but I just wanted to show you how impressive all this is. And there's the hidden treasure. And I've heard if you like the video, you do get some access to it. So worth a go, I reckon. Or heading into Mexico land. And just in the distance, I see Juvalen, an Intamin straddle coaster. Really looking forward to experiencing my first one of those. Well, we have a walk-on drop tower, so I think I'm going to tick this off first. And again, look at all the queue line thing. And this is for a drop tower. Oh, that's a little bit sinister though. Oh, it's a rotating one too. These can be fun. So we're going to celebrate Cinco de Mayo by being dropped from the sky. Lucha! <laughs> El Grito Drop Tower was really good fun. So that's manufactured by an Austrian company called Fun Time. It actually only opened here last year. Um, but yeah, really impressive what they've done there. And well, the impressively themed stations continue. As I hunt for the entrance for Juvalen. Well, great to get a ride on Juvalen there. An Intamin family straddle coaster, two tire launches on that. First one, um, I'd say the first sort of third was fairly mediocre. You were kind of winding up to really get going. But once you hit that second launch, everything just picked up. And that's a really fun attraction. I enjoyed that a lot. Slight rattle there, but nothing that detracts too much from the ride experience. Hopefully you saw on camera there, the excellent pre-launch section there. Really nice theming, as has been the case across the park so far today. So yeah. Another impressive coaster. Um, it'd be good to see one of these in the UK, wouldn't it? Well, we've got what looks to be some sort of wild mouse here, and as is some sort of law in Scandinavia, all theme parks have to have a Thor themed ride. So let's go give this a look. And it's another impressive entrance, though.
Thor's hammer there, a Gertzlau bobsled. So rides very similar to Cobra at Portons Park. Never a bad thing, because that's a really fun coaster. Yeah, I enjoyed that. The turns were tight, but not too aggressive. The helices were strong. The airtime hills gave you a little bit. So yeah, really well themed. And if I turn the camera around here, we are in some sort of throne room for Thor, Loki, and Odin. I mean, it's more benches than thrones, but you get the idea. So a really well presented pirate ship over the water there. And now we've got some sort of dinosaur area with Spinosaurus. That is a Zampella disco. Don't see them every day, do you? Unless you go to a theme park. A dino pizza, I wonder if that's a pizza pasta type place. Might try that. Oh, look at that. Literally, its spine is making up the base of the track. Hello, my name's Alan, and I think you should subscribe to Luke Theme Park Adventures. Well, seeing as I'm here and it appears to be a walk-on, let's do the T-Rex Family Coaster. Well, I think it's safe to say the animatronics here are a little better taken care of than they were at Emerald Park last week. Go check that vlog out if you want to know what I'm talking about. T-Rex Family Coaster was a fairly standard Mack Rise Power Coaster. Two lap special, did the speed up on the second lap as well, which uh, Max and Maritz does at Efteling. Yeah, it's a family coaster, it's good. Some really nice theming on there as well. Onboard audio throughout, and uh, obviously dinosaur animatronics are always a winner in my eyes. Still don't have one in my house, which is disappointing, but who knows, one day. Can you imagine open fires at a UK theme park? It'd be carnage. The Danish are so much better behaved. Well, lots of food options in this Wild West area of the park. There's burgers just there. We've got popcorn and churros and candy floss there. Kebabs over here. And there's pancakes up ahead too. So yeah, this is the spot to come to if you're looking for some grub. <laughs> <laughs> and there I was saying the Danish were better behaved. In the background there, I spy a giant Intamin gyro swing kind of heading in that direction. And again, the theming is spot on. Look at how well presented this gyro swing is. We've got fountains out the front here, some lovely rock work and everything. Yeah, this is awesome. So Tigerin up next. I do love these things. Wow, look at this. I mean, this is flat ride theming.
Tigerant absolutely delivered. Those Intamin gyros are so forceful, so tall. You're so exposed on them. You have basically a lap bar and then the shoulder restraints are kind of, they're, they're a good few inches away from your body, so you've got total freedom. When you hit the highest points on there, you, you, you're out of your seat for such a long amount of time. It's brilliant. They're the best flat rides out there, in my opinion. If there's one criticism, though, I did feel the cycle was a little short, and for that reason, I would give the edge to Loki over at Leesburg. But Tiger Inn is fantastically presented. The theming is awesome. I mean, the queue line, there's no reason for the queue line to be that well themed, really. But they do it anyway, so massive props to Jer Summerland. I want to see more of these built because they are so, so good. So you do have the Long Kun Expedition log flume here as well. It is very tempting because the heat has risen dramatically in the last hour or so. But there's an Intamin suspended coaster up ahead of me through the trees there. I think that's the priority. Then maybe I will come back and do some of these water rides. Because like I say, the weather is, uh, is suiting it. Well, Dragokongan is the final big coaster here for me to ride. I've left this one till last because it has had the biggest queue throughout the day. It's currently staying around 30 minutes, but we'll see because they do tend to overestimate a little bit. Every queue I've joined has, has generally been a little shorter than was expected. So fingers crossed. Rodrigo Congan was a very solid family coaster from Intamin there. I've heard that that's a very rattly coaster, but to be honest, I wouldn't say that's any more rattly than a modern B&M. I do think the Coma probably do that suspended family coaster a little better though. They're probably a little bit more practiced at it than Intamin are to be fair, but I thought that was decent overall. I like the dispatch sequence with the lighting and then into that little dark section before the lift hill. The airtime hills didn't really do a lot. I was sat at the front, so perhaps at the back you'd get dragged through them a bit more. But the helices had a little bit of power to them, so yeah, overall I thought that was, that was solid and decent. Enjoyed it. Well, Long Kun Expedition was a really fun log flume. It continued my theory that the shorter drops are the most soaking, but overall some really good fun stuff there. There was uh, some good theming throughout. The elephants near the start was really cool. 
and uh, yeah, you can't really go wrong with a log flume in this sort of weather that gives you a bit of a splash but nothing too drenching. Well, I don't get many opportunities to ride into Minjiros, so given that I'm walking past it, Tigering is so good. Uh, I think we got a slightly longer cycle that time because there were basically no queues, which was good. So that's, it's just so good. The freedom of the restraints, you get lifted out of your seat massively on the upswing. The G-force on the downswing is so fierce. It's the perfect flat ride. Well, there is some sort of chicken farmyard coaster here. It's the only coaster I've not ridden, so let's do it. There appears to be some sort of menacing fox on the front there. Yeah, not sure about him. Wilde Hansejagd, if that's how you pronounce it, aka the chicken coaster, which is what I'm going to call it. Standard zero force, pretty good fun, pretty good whip off the drop. Also very short, as you'd expect, two lap special. Uh, entire experience made better and slightly more bizarre by the ride up who insisted on showing a small porcelain chicken to riders as they disboarded. So both summer land parks allow guests to bring their dogs in with them should they choose. And uh, nice multi-layered water bowls as well there. Little things like that are a nice touch. They make it feel more like a welcoming family environment. There is admittedly something ironic about a massive Intamin fanboy like myself coming to a park with lots of Intamin and wearing an RMC t-shirt. Speaking of Intamin though, let's go ride another one. Ride number two on Juvelin. Looking forward to really cementing an opinion on this one. <laughs> Couldn't quite get the back row on Juvelin there, but near enough. That's a really good fun family coaster. I'm not sure it's quite as elite as some people rate it. There's definitely a little bit of a rattle towards the back and you do notice as you're going over the tyre launches, which is kind of to be expected. And obviously right, LSMs are preferred but like, there's so much whippiness to it the, the second launch is aggressive you do get a nice punch from it the bends in particular i think where it shines the airtime hills don't really do a lot i'm not sure if that's the seating position or just the speed that it takes them uh, if you notice the footage earlier that first air hill it takes really slowly and uh, I, certainly when i rode at the front i didn't get anything but i didn't really feel much towards the back of the train either but it is really good fun and sometimes that's all you need So they do have an octopus here too, or a polyp if you prefer to call them that. I don't like calling it a polyp because it sounds like an illness. Anyway, I think I might go and give this a go because these are always fun. And then finish the day with a couple more laps on Pirata because I feel like going stengel diving. A couple more rides on Pirata. One second row from back, one second row from front. And I would definitely say nearer the front is where it's at. You really get pushed over those hills. You feel the forces on every hill, whereas towards the back, you sort of get over the Stengels midway through, but not so much elsewhere. It's a great ride. Probably the best coaster here. In fact, I'd say comfortably the best coaster here. Um, but the lineup is generally quite strong here, I think. It is obviously a lot of family focused coasters, but um, I've enjoyed most of what I've ridden today. Maybe they could use an, another standout coaster here, but Paraton is not a bad number one to have at your park. Well, I've had such a great time here at Jer Summerland today. It's a lovely park, really well run, well managed. The operations were good, the rides are good. It's clean, it's well themed, there's music. 
there's not much else to say. This is almost a perfect theme park and I think it is slightly better than Farrup yesterday, although Farrup was great too. So two fantastic theme parks out in the north of Denmark if it's a trip you're interested in doing. So I'm gonna call it a day now and head back to the airport for my flight home. According to a ride up, I have very much sun on my head. So I think that's an indicator. It's time to get out of the heat and head back to England. But thank you very much for watching my little trip out here to Denmark. Uh, you can watch the Farrup Summerland video, that's up on the screen now, and I will catch you next time. Cheers.